Hi, this is my informative speech video. My title is Sleep Paralysis, Sleep Disorders, and Meditation. For as long back as I can remember, I have had a visitor come to me in my sleep. When I was a little girl, I can remember my mom tucking me in, reading me my bedtime story, handing me a teddy bear, and I would drift off. But not long after I fell asleep, I would wake up and I could barely wiggle my fingers or my legs. I couldn't move anything. There was also something in my room. I would see it off in the corner. Sometimes it could be a shadowy figure. It could be just an uh, auditory hallucination, or it could be any number of things. And it was terrifying. It felt very real. Um, this happened to me all through my teenage years, all through my childhood, even into my early adulthood. And when I would tell people about this, especially because back then it wasn't as well known of a condition, um, I would have two things said to me by my more religious friends. I would be told that I definitely had a demon and I should probably start praying. And by my more rational minded friends, they would tell me especially when I was a kid, that it was just a product of my over overactive imagination. Um, and, but what I was actually suffering from was a very common thing called sleep paralysis. Uh, sleep paralysis can be truly terrifying though, especially if you don't know what is happening to you, and especially when you're a child. Um, any sort of disruption in your sleep patterns can mess with you. It messes not only with your mental health, but it can mess with your physical health as well. However, new studies uh, done show that it is possible to cut the frequency of these episodes in half for people who suffer from them chronically. Uh, any type of disruptive sleep pattern uh, or sleep-related disorder, they're pretty common, uh, but they have lasting effects on your health. People who suffer from chronic sleep paralysis often suffer uh, from other sleep disorders like narcolepsy. Um, some people tend to lucid dream a whole lot, which isn't a disorder, but there's all sort of stuff in that scope that sleep paralysis ties into. Um, new studies have shown though that doing meditative relaxation therapy may actually help to reduce the number of these episodes so you can get better sleep. Uh, as I said before, sleep paralysis is a pretty common disorder, uh, disorder. According to Wikipedia, anywhere from 8 to 50% of people will experience it at least once in their lifetime. However, those who suffer from it chronically, and especially along um, with other sleep issues, uh, it, it really can take a toll on their health. According to one article written by Science Daily, Research done in 2021 states that people who suffer from sleep disorders have an increased risk of dying early. It also found this to be especially true for women and people who suffer from diabetes. It can also take a toll on your weight, on your cognitive abilities, and it can cause or exasperate depression. Sleep is very important. Um, I didn't know what I was experiencing until uh, I was much older. I didn't know that it had a diagnosis or a name uh, until I was in my early 20s. I had one particularly long episode. It probably lasted about 10 minutes, but to me, while suffering from it, it, it felt like it took forever. It was really terrifying. Um, the next morning I went to the ER. I had been going through this my, my entire life and I, I didn't know what it was. I didn't know how to tell people what was happening to me without feeling crazy. But I finally went in and I went to the ER and I spoke to a doctor. And immediately I think the ER doctor thought I was crazy too because I went in talking about shadowy figures in the corner of my room and being paralyzed. <laughs> um, so he got on the phone with a, a doctor who studied sleep and explained my situation to him. The doctor knew what it was right away. He said what I was suffering from was something called parasomnia. He said that most people experience it at least once in their lifetime. Um, some people experience a few times and a few unlucky people like myself experience it chronically. So how sleep paralysis works. Uh, sleep paralysis occurs when our natural REM cycle is disrupted. 
Medical News Today explains that it is when the conscious part of your brain uh, wakes up out of order from the rest of your body. We go through sleep cycles and our, our body and our brain shuts down in different steps. It gets confused. It messes with the order that, um, that your body does it naturally. Um, so your brain wakes up, however, it's still partially in REM cycle. So you have the ability to dream even though you're conscious. On top of this, your body is still shut down. You go into a temporary uh, state of paralysis while you're sleeping, so that way you're not acting out your dream. So you're aware, you're dreaming, and you can't move. Uh, the, spare, the scary part about this comes into play when you start to have your dreams turn to nightmares because you cannot tell the difference between what is reality and what is just your brain making stuff up to explain what is happening to you. Uh, there are some very common hallucinations that happen to people with sleep paralysis. It, it, almost all of them suffer from about the same four or five different things. Some people think that they see demons or shadowy figures. Uh, some be, and most people have the feeling that they're being held down because of the paralysis or they feel like they can't breathe. A lot of people think they're suffocating. Um, <clears throat> researchers actually believe throughout most of history when you would hear stories of people who thought they were being uh, visited by demons or aliens. Lots of times the simple explanation to this was sleep paralysis because you can't distinguish reality from your dream. Uh, so there is a reasonable explanation for it, even though it feels very real. Uh, there have not been a lot of studies done about sleep paralysis, surprisingly, even though it's a very common thing. In fact, um, they don't have a lot of studies, especially about people who suffer from it chronically. They do think that you can have a genetic predisposition to sleep paralysis. They also know that it can be brought on by stress, by PTSD, and for, for people who lucid uh, dream are more likely to experience it. However, here's the good news. Uh, there was a study done that says that you can actually cut your sleep paralysis episodes down by 50%. This study was done in 2020 and was written about in Frontiers in Neurology. They found that something as simple as meditation relaxation therapy may also help to reduce these episodes of sleep paralysis and narcolepsy. Um, all the participants in the study were of the median age of 27.8 years old. They all had narcolepsy and they all had to have suffered from sleep paralysis in the last uh, month at least four times. The study found that within two months of people practicing uh, these meditation relaxation techniques, that the episodes had gone down by nearly half. They also did a control group that just practiced deep breathing instead of the meditation relaxation, but they saw no improvement in sleep paralysis during the trial. Sleep paralysis can be scary, especially if you have no idea what you're experiencing. Um, I didn't know, you know, what I was experiencing as a child. And like I said, it was terrifying. Um, but I do know now. So as an adult, when I go through these experiences, I can rationalize what's happening to me. Um, and though in general, like I said, sleep paralysis is not harmful. Any sort of chronic sleep disorder can be, especially over an extended period of time. So thankfully, this study sheds a little light on, on helping to curb these episodes on helping to relax yourself before sleep so you get a better rest at night's sleep. Um, and so the next time you hear stories from someone about little green men visiting them in their sleep or a demon coming and scaring them, take it with a grain of salt because more than likely they are probably just paralyzed while dreaming while also kind of awake, which is way less scary. Thanks.